Hello everyone, my name is Delonda and thank you for joining me today on the Design Bundles YouTube channel. I am really excited to be here and super excited to share this process with you. Today, this is what we're making. We are sublimating on glitter vinyl. This pillow cover is 100% cotton and I cannot wait to share this process with you. Make sure you stay tuned because once we get into a Cricut Design Space, that is where the real learning starts to happen now when I mention my materials because I did not record this video in order I failed to mention that you will need a long standard grip mat the one that is 12 by 24 it looks like this you will need a long standard grip mat and you will also need butcher paper I did not mention that when I was listing my materials so please forgive me I think by the end of this tutorial you will be so excited about getting your gnomes as big as this that you will forgive me so without further ado let's get started the materials I'm going to use for this project include my Cricut maker however you can use any full-size Cricut cutting machine I'm using a 16 by 16 inch pillow as well as a 100% cotton black pillow cover that I purchased from Amazon. I'm also using a sub sublimation paper, a pen pen weeding tool, hippo sublimation ink, white glitter vinyl. You can use any brand of white glitter vinyl. My heat press is a Starcraft clamshell 15 by 15 heat press. However, you do not have to use a full size heat press like this. You do, however, need to have a heat press that will get up to at least 400 degrees Fahrenheit. My printer is an Epson EcoTank 2760 that I have converted for use with sublimation ink. So let's head on over to designbundles.net so that I can show you the sublimation bundle as well as the file that I am using for this tutorial. The bundle that I selected my file from is the Christmas Sublimation Bundle Volume 2. It is currently $19. However, as you can see, it is valued at close to $300. There are 40 files included within this bundle. And as you can see from everyone who has already purchased this bundle, it has a five-star rating. So when I look closer at the bundle, um, I can see that there are multiple files included in each of the bundles, and there are some really awesome files included. The bundle that I have selected from is this one right here that just has eight Christmas PNGs included, and the specific file that I'm using is one that says Gnome for the Holidays. And as you can see in this example, they use this file on a white pillow cover with black vinyl. I am going to use this file on a 100% black pillow cover with white glitter vinyl. And I'm also going to place my sublimated gnomes on the black pillow cover using the glitter HTV as a hack. So without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to my Cricut Maker. The first thing I'm going to do is upload the file that I downloaded from designbundles.net. I'm going to go over to upload. I already have it uploaded right here, but you will be uploading it from wherever you have it saved on your computer. I'm going to click upload. The file is going to come in big and I can see from my layers panel that this is a print then cut file. I am going to reduce the view on my screen to right at 25% and then I'm going to grab a shape. I'm going to grab a square. The square will represent the pillow cover. I'm going to change the color and the size of this square to 16 inches by 16 inches. I'm going to change the color of it to black. And then I'm going to choose the arrange option and send it to the back. I want this square to stay 
as the bottom layer for the full duration of this tutorial. I am going to rely heavily on the layers panel for this tutorial because the layers panel will let me know everything I need to know about what's going on in my canvas. When I look here, I can see these two triangles. This lets me know that there is an error somewhere. I know that Cricut Design Space currently has a limitation on the size for print then cut. So I know that if I wanted to print then cut this file, I would not be able to do it unless I use a hack. I'm going to show you how I plan to separate this print then cut file into four separate layers. But before we get into that, let me move the GNOME file on top of the pillow cover and just start to resize it and see how big I want the gnomes to be on the pillow cover um, so that when I do my resizing and try this hack or demonstrate this hack for you, it will actually work, okay? So what I'm going to make sure to pay attention to is the height of this file. I actually want the height of the file to just be right at 11.5. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to have any errors when I get ready to cut this. Okay, I still see an error right here, but we're going to make sure we fix that. The height of this file is 11.5. The width of this file, I am going to unlock it and I want the width to be right at 14.102, okay? So my height is 11.5 and my width is 14.102. The reason why I wanted to do that is because I know that once I put the pillow inside the pillow cover, I want the gnomes to still be flat on the front of the pillow cover, okay? I'm not concerned about the text at this point. I'm only concerned about the size of the gnomes, okay? So now I have this file exactly how I want it. The next thing I'm going to do, you see if you look at the bottom right of my screen, I don't have any options for changing this file or making any doing any kind of hacks. In order to change this file, I'm gonna to have to change it, change the operation type from print then cut to basic cut. So now that I have it as the size that I want it, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate this file. So now when I look at my layers panel, I see two print then cuts and one basic cut, which is the square. Okay, um, I'm, what I'm going to do now now this file, as it is, it actually consists of four different images. There are one, two, three gnomes, plus some text. So in order to make changes and separate this file completely, I would need to have four duplicates of this. So I already have one, and remember, I can't do anything to it in this form. I have to change it to a basic cut. So I'm gonna change this to a basic cut, and I am going to duplicate this three more times. So I have one, and I'm gonna duplicate three more times. One, two, three, for a total of four basic cuts, okay? Stay with me. All right, and all of these basic cuts are the exact same size, and all of these basic cuts match the size of my original print then cut. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to separate this first gnome away from all of the rest of these images. So I'm going to click on Contour, and when my contour screen comes up, I'm going to select Hide All Contours, and I'm just, I see that when I'm looking right here at the bottom left of my screen, I see that all I have left is the gnome on the left, and that is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to click over here, okay? So now I have the first gnome. I'm going to just put it right here. I'm going to select the second um, duplicate. I'm going to select contour, and then I'm going to select hide all contours again. This time, I want the gnome that is in the middle. So I'm going to select the gnome that is in the middle and I'm going to remove everything else because all I want is the one that's in the middle, okay? I'm gonna move it over here. 
Okay. And then now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select the third duplicate. I'm going to choose contour. And this time I want the gnome that's on the right. I'm going to select hide all contours and I'm going to select the gnome that is on the right and I'm going to remove everything else. Okay. I just want the gnome that is on the right. I don't want the one that's on the left. Okay, now we're good to go. Let me just make one duplicate of this just in case I need it. And I'll just move it over here to the side. Okay, so I'm going to click contour. And now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to select hide all contours. And this time I only want the words at the bottom, known for the holidays. And I can look at my screen and I can see what's going on with those words at the bottom or the text that is at the bottom of the screen. That's all I'm doing is selecting that and I can see what's going on. I don't want any gnomes in this part of my, um, in this part of my contour. So I'm gonna remove the gnomes and remove this little piece and remove this gnome and remove that little piece and that is perfect. Okay, I think we are good to go now. Okay, so I have it, I have four, layers. I have separated this PNG file and all of this should be the same exact size as this. Okay. This is perfect. Now, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to use this as my layer of white glitter vinyl. So I'm going to change this to white. Okay. And it is a basic cut and that's absolutely perfect because when I put it on the pillow, I'm actually going to put the white glitter vinyl down first. What I'm going to do with this is I am going to change this back to the original color that it was. So this is the heck that I was speaking of. I'm going to take this first gnome, which should match the same size as this one, right? Okay, and I am going to go up here to my operation. I'm gonna change this to a print then cut and I'm going to choose this little gray box right here and I'm going to choose restore. And I know that I can print this guy. Let me make sure I arrange and send it to the front. Okay, and I, when I get ready to print this, I'm gonna put him back just on top, just like that, okay? And so this is excellent, right? Because now I can do a print then cut and I'm not limited by what Cricut Design Space allows. This will be a game changer if you do, did not already know this, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm going to choose uh, my operation type as print then cut, and I'm going to restore it and now he will fit on top. And then I'll do the same thing with this one. I will change it to a print then cut and I will restore the original artwork and it'll go right there on top. I don't need to do anything with the text or the font or the text because this already represents the glitter vinyl and it is already in the exact size that I want it to be. Now, if I wanted to make it larger, of course I could um, by, you know, detaching this and making it bigger, but I think it's perfect just the way that it is. So now I am ready. I'm going to delete this. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to just, I'll just hide it for now and I don't need this. I'll hide this for now and I don't need this square anymore. It was just serving as a template. So now I am going to save this. I am going to call this gnomes. I'm just gonna call it gnomes. Well, I'll call it gnome pillow. Okay, and I will save it. And now I am ready to click make it. I should have four mats. I should have one long or uh, extra long standard grip mat. And then I should have three additional mats for my print then cut. Let's see if that's what I get. I'm gonna click make it. Okay, see how big my gnome is? This is excellent. All right, and I am going to mirror this. I'm going to go to my second mat and I'm going to mirror this. I'm going to go to my third mat and I'm also going to mirror this. And I'm going to go to my fourth mat, which will be the glitter vinyl. And I'm also going to mirror this. Okay, I'm gonna to go to my first mat again. I'm gonna click okay right here. And I am going to click continue and I am going to 
send this to my printer. Now this part might not matter much to you because you probably do not have the same exact printer that I have, but I'm using an Epson EcoTank 2760. I keep the ad bleed on. I never turn it off. I always keep ad bleed on. I'm going to use my system dialog. I'm going to click print. I'm going to choose my Epson EcoTank 27 series printer. I'm going to select preferences. I am going to do my sublimation preset with the mirror off because I've already mirrored in Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to click OK and everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I am going to get one sheet of paper inserted. I'm using A sub paper. The A sub, the word A sub is facing the back. I'm gonna insert this into my printer. And I am going to click the OK button. I have my first image printed out. Now I will get the other two printed out. I'm not gonna make you sit through and watch that. I will get the second two images printed out and then we will get the glitter vinyl cut out. One thing I always do with my sublimated images is that I always let them sit on the heat plate after I printed them. I typically leave them on the heat plate for about a minute or so. So you can see one of my gnome images that is sitting on the heat plate. The other two have already sat on the heat plate for about a minute or so and i don't ever skip this step now let's get the glitter vinyl cut out i have it on the glitter iron on setting and i have it on more pressure and i'm going to click the flashing c Okay, I have my gnomes cut out. I'm gonna feel it to make sure the vinyl is cut all the way through. If I feel as though the vinyl did not cut all the way through, what I can do is just press this C for Cricut or C for cut, and I can let my Cricut cut it again. So I can just check it and feel it and I can it feels like it's cut all the way through, but I just want to be sure. So I am going to send this through to cut again. I am going to get this weeded out. And this is a really big design that I'm excited to share with everyone. Super excited. Okay, so here's my glitter vinyl, and now we are ready to press. I am going to do a quick pre-press on my pillow. It doesn't really matter which direction the zipper goes in because what will matter is <laughs> the direction that I put my design in. So I am going to just do a quick pre-press. I have my heat press set to 330 degrees because that is the heat setting for Cricut's glitter iron off. So I'm gonna do a quick pre-press. Need to adjust the pressure. Uh, just five seconds or so. Okay, I don't think I need that much pressure. Let me decrease the pressure. Okay, and now I am going to press my glitter vinyl on uh, 330 degrees for 30 seconds. Those are the settings that is that are recommended according to the Cricut heat guide. I'm actually going to put some craft board on the inside of this pillow cover because I can still feel the zipper and I don't want, I really don't want to feel it while I'm pressing. If you don't have craft board, you can always use card stock. Craft board is just a thicker version of card stock in my opinion. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I've done a pre-press. I'm going to go ahead and press this on 330 degrees for 
30 seconds. And I am going to use a Teflon sheet. Thirty seconds. Okay, Cricut's Glitter Vinyl is a cool peel, not cold, but cool. So I will just um, remove this from my heat press and just let it cool off just a little bit before I remove the backing sheet. I think that's good. I'm gonna say that's good. I'm gonna say it's great. It looks good. I am so excited about this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the press. This looks good even without the sublimated images. I cannot wait to see what it's going to look like once I add the actual gnomes. So excited. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is grab the sublimated gnomes and I'm going to grab my Cricut heat tape. I'll do this middle guy first. I do need to change my settings to 400 degrees. Okay, I have all of my gnomes taped down. I have set my heat press to 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And I am going to add a piece of butcher paper on top just to protect my platen. So that there is no ink um, left on the top of my plate, and I think I've taped it down good enough. I am notorious for being an over taper. If you can relate, leave me a heart down below in the comments. If you can relate to being an over taper, okay. I am going to just put a piece of butcher paper here at the top, and I am ready to. Get this bad boy pressed and show you the final results. 400 degrees, 60 seconds. Let me grab my gloves. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh, I see a little bit of ghosting right there. Ah, what did I need to do? If you know me, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say I love it. I'm going to say I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at how big those gnomes are. There is some ghosting right here. Maybe I should have taped it down a little bit more. I'm afraid to try to sublimate it again because I might mess it up. But I love the way this turned out. What am I going to say? I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited about this. So my final thoughts about this project. I love it. I love the way it turned out. Um, do I wish that I had no ghosting? Yes. Do I also love this project? Yes. I love the big gnomes. Hopefully you found that hack helpful with separating the PNG and then resizing it to what you need it to be. Hopefully you found this process about sublimating on glitter vinyl helpful. This is a hack that I think is really fantastic, especially if you don't want to always be limited to polyester or white or using light color fabrics, um, sublimation on glitter vinyl is the way to go. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking this channel, subscribing to this channel and turning on the bell for notifications because new content is uploaded weekly. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.